All right. All right, and here we are today with Vicky Mountain, who has kindly agreed to get up at 7 a.m. to uh, join us for this webinar today. So thank you so much for joining us today, Vicky. Morning, Mel. It's an absolute pleasure. So we've had you in the um, Tribe 365 for some time now, and I've been watching your comments and your stories, and I, we really wanted to reach out and find out a little bit more about you and how you were traveling along your journey with Parkinson. So I guess if we can start at the beginning, what was it that took you off to the doctor? What were the first symptoms that you were experiencing? Um, my very first symptoms were when I went running, my leg would drag. Um, and how long ago was that? That was 12 years ago. Okay. Um, and I didn't pay much attention. Um, I got pregnant, stopped running. Um, and then once my child was born, I noticed I couldn't do a raindrop kind of movement, like pitch patter raindrops to her. Um, yeah. And that's when I went to the doctors. And um, what was it that they said at, at the beginning? How long did it take for that diagnosis? Um, I was diagnosed just, just over 12 months ago. So just 12 months ago you were diagnosed and it was 12 years ago you had the first symptoms? Yes. So that's a very atypical kind of pattern. Why do you think it's taken that long for the diagnosis? Um, well, the doctor was very good, my GP. They referred me straight to a neurologist. Um, first neurologist said there was nothing wrong and it would go away. It didn't. So it was about four years later, I went back to another neurologist. Um, and again, the impression seemed to be that I was making it up. Right. Okay. Yeah. And what other, what other symptoms were you experiencing by this stage? Um, by the time I was diagnosed now, um, I couldn't drive, I couldn't cut my food up, I couldn't dress myself. So I was really in a very, very low place. Um, and then yeah. I ended up travelling to London to see a neurologist who straight away said, you've got Parkinson's. And when you say you were in a low place, do you feel that you were depressed at that time? Definitely. Yeah, and, and how, how do you feel now, like a year on, knowing that you've got Parkinson's and you're actually doing something about it, how do you feel now? Um, I would say when I was diagnosed, it was a huge sense of relief. I think I was the only person ever to be pleased to be told they've got Parkinson's uh, because it was, okay, it's not great having this degenerative brain disease, but it was something that can be, I knew what I was fighting and I knew things could be done to help it if not to cure it. Um, so and, now, and as you said before, it was real, you know, if you'd had people not really believing you or thinking you were putting it on, it was, it was real, it was validated, yeah, I guess. Exactly, yeah. So it was a huge relief. Yeah. And then with the medications, how, what was your feeling on taking medications or not taking medications and what are you, what are you doing at the moment? Um, I take two kinds of medications. So I take Requip and I take Levodopa. Um, so when I started on the levodopa, I was reluctant because of what you hear about it um, and the side effects. But again, it, the effects were pretty much immediate and it, again, changed my life. Did it? Because they yeah. say, I mean, when I speak to movement disorder specialists, they say that with levodopa medication, they're ultimately aiming to have you functioning as well as you can 80% of the time. Do you think that that has been achieved or exceeded with the levodopa in that last 12 months? Um, I wouldn't say I was at 80% all of the time, um, but certainly half the time. Yeah, okay. Where and so you would, sorry, carry on. Same from where it was, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So of the things that you mentioned before that you weren't doing, what are you doing now that you, you weren't doing 12 months ago, for instance? All of them. So I'm back driving. I can walk my daughter to school. I dress myself. I feed myself. Those day-to-day -day things that you take for granted otherwise I'm back doing and, and your mood feels good. I remember one day when driving in my car thinking, is this how I used to feel all the time? Because this is really good. I like being me and I'd forgotten oh, who me was. Isn't that amazing? That's fantastic. Um, so Vicky, let me back it up a bit because that's obviously fantastic and I know that the levodopa medication would have had a really significant impact yeah. on on your capacity to think, move, feel better. Um, but tell me about um, what you've done for yourself as well, because taking medication is, is kind of frontline defense. What else have you been doing to get yourself uh, in the best condition that you can be? How have you best managed your Parkinson's, do you think? 
Um, I think positive outlook and of course PD warrior. That would be the other thing that I say has had a major impact on my life. And so how did you find PD Warrior? I'm curious about that. Um, a friend of mine, well, we've got like a small Facebook group of mums with PD Warrior and she sent a link to the app and I think her physio told her about it. And she was saying, oh, look, there's this free resource you can get onto. Um, and that's how I found PD Warrior. I hadn't heard of it before. Yeah, right. And had you, were you doing much exercise leading up to that point? I was trying to. So I was trying to join in classes at the gym but couldn't quite do it. And then I looked at classes for people with Parkinson's and old people and I didn't quite fit there. I, I didn't want to be in that gang almost. Yeah. Um, so Which I is said, a really common, common um, pathway, isn't it? It just, there's not really a, a place for you to fit into so that your patterns of behavior become very sedentary. Yes. Um, but I was determined, my, my goal was to walk my daughter to school again. And, that's and what so I, I, and I presume you're, you're doing that as well? Yes. Yeah. yeah, oh, that's wonderful. So you started the PD Warrior program. Well, you've, I know you've done the 10-week challenge. You said it's changed your life. What do you think are the biggest things that you can attribute PD Warrior to and, and not the, the medication and the lever doper? What do you think PD Warrior specifically has helped you with? Um, the biggest thing I would say is confidence, Mel. And I think that's something that's not mentioned enough. It gives you, because it, the whole community is full of positive people who are out there doing things. It's nobody moaning about what they can't do. And you think, if he can do it, I can do it. If they can yeah. do it, I can do it. Um, and it gave me confidence to do small things like, okay, I'm going to try and dry myself with a towel instead of a flannel today. Um, so confidence, absolutely the biggest thing. Um, day to day things, like I say, drying myself, putting tights on. I can wear tights again, you know, <laughs> hot and sweaty and late. Yeah, yeah. All very important um, daily things, aren't they? And little things like that make a difference. Um, but then, like I say, the bigger thing, it's given me confidence that I can go to theme parks and I've always done that theme parks. But I can do that and I will get through the day. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Uh, when you were diagnosed, obviously you said you, you said there was a sense of relief and I think we've discussed why that was a, a sense you had. Were there any other feelings that you had at that time around uh, loss of control or the prognosis of your future or things like that? Anything that was concerning at that diagnosis point as well? Um, I get frightened for the future. No, it was mainly relief. I think I, I think you go through a bit of a bereavement curve. So I went through a time where I didn't believe it. And I mm -hmm. thought they must have been looking, because I had a DAT scan. And I thought they must have been looking at somebody else's scan. Right. Um, so so yeah, mainly relief. Mainly relief. With the, other, with the other side of things, so I guess concern about the future or, or yeah, concern. What is it that worries you the most about your future, do you think? Um, losing the ability to do things myself, losing that independence. And having, I mean, you've already lost, you, you had lost quite a lot of that independence from what you've said up to that point. And then you've had that given back to DOPA and the exercise program. How do you think moving forward now, knowing the, the value of the medication, knowing the value of exercise, your future trajectory and the progression of your symptoms will be different. Do you think that's had a, uh, I mean, obviously it's had a big impact on your functional level now and how you feel mm. and how you move. Do you think moving forward that that will continue and there's things now that you'll do differently? I certainly hope so, man. I mean, exercise is a big thing. I make sure I exercise every single day. Um, and even when it's hard, you think today is not going to be the day that I give up. Today will not be that day. Um, oh, and I love it. There's, going to, there's been a couple of motivational statements on the um, Warrior website that have stuck with me, um, particularly pick up your short sword, pick up your shield and fight. I've yeah. Myself, I was walked along a few times. Yeah, it's, it's great. I mean, I think what amazes me in the Tribe 365 community is, as you said, how incredibly positive people are about 
what they can do for themselves, what their brave goals are, what they have achieved, what they're going to achieve. I, you know, I, I think about the Parkinson's population I worked with even five years ago, and there was nowhere near the level of positivity that I can see now. And I think it's, it's because people are starting to believe in themselves, getting that confidence back, thinking about a better future rather than just a declining uh, trajectory of symptom progression. Yeah, and thinking about things that you want to achieve. Um, yeah. For me, I'm hoping to walk up Snowden. So that's a Excellent. massive thing for me, and I don't know whether I'll ever actually achieve it. But if I don't, what kind of it, will I? Well, yeah, that's exactly right. What's your kind of time frame on that, Vicky? Because we might have to come back and revisit that. I'm hoping to do it next May. Next May. Okay, I'm going to put that down in my calendar. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh, you've just said it. It's it's out there. It's public knowledge now. <laughs> May 2020. Okay, we'll come back and revisit that. Care to share any other goals that you want to make be accountable to? No, thank you. <laughs> okay. No, that's fine. Um, all right, so tell me a little bit about the family and how much that has played into the support from the family has played into how you, where you are today, I guess. Um, absolutely. I live with my husband and my eight-year-old daughter. Um, and obviously my husband has been a massive support to me from the days where he was cutting up my food um, to now taking control of the household tasks and giving me the time to do those exercises. So I never yeah. have to feel guilty about taking that time. He's fully on board with the importance of those exercises. And does he do them? They have a go every now and again, both my husband and my daughter have a go, but they can't do crazy. I'm the only one that can do crazy now. I reckon you'd be about the only one of many, actually. It's such a challenging exercise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it's by far the hardest one that we've ever, we've ever kind of broached in the program. So well done that you can do it. I haven't seen you do it, though. I'd love to see an example. What now? Well, no, you don't have to do it for me now, but if you could send me a video, I'd love to see okay. it. I will do. All right. That, I've got you on homework for two parts now. Um, I guess going back to your husband, it's a bit of a personal question, but now that you are more independent, do you think that that has helped with the relationship? Because obviously things change when the husband or spouse becomes more of a carer than potentially a, a life partner. Has that improved, do you think? Or not improved, but has that taken the relationship back to more of a spousal relationship? It has, yeah. Because no, nobody, particularly at my age, Mel, you don't want your husband to be your carer. You don't want your husband or your daughter to be dressing you in the morning. Um, whereas now we can go out and do things together and have fun. Yeah, and go to those theme parks. I saw some of the photos in your Facebook page. They looked amazing. Yeah, yeah. We went to Disney <laughs> early in the year as well. Oh, so that's a bit of a, a bit of a sideline hobby for you, is it? Yeah, but I have to tell you now, when I'm struggling at the end of the day around a theme park, what gets me through is over the river. Is it? That's the way I walk, over the river, over the river. And that's what That is brilliant. Through. That's so good. I love that. Do any of the other exercises, do they become part of how you do things during the day? I mean, I often think about Skyreach and dishwashers and 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 crockery smashing on the wall behind me. I mean, anything else that kind of resonates? Um, crab snap is a good one for um, personal hygiene care. <laughs> yes. So that's been a good one as well. What man needs the walking ones. Yeah, right. Okay. And are they the biggest issues that you have at the moment with your symptom progression? Is it with walking gait, stability, those sorts of things? Yes. And they're probably the things that have the biggest impact. Um, yeah. The other one's box step. So yeah. going through a door, I might do a bit of a box step to push the door. Fantastic. I think you're doing a really good job bringing those activities and exercises into the functional tasks. I mean, that's really what it's about, isn't it? About improving your everyday activities so that they're, you know, they're really independent and functional and, you know, not aggressive, but competent movements. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well done. So Vicky, I'd, I won't keep you much longer because I know you're going to get your day started, but have you got any feedback for people that are kind of sitting on the fence, not sure whether exercise, first of all, is, is important for them? And second question, PD Warrior specifically, what do, you, what do you think it is about PD Warrior and the 10-week challenge that's really made the, the biggest gains for you? Um, 
confidence is the main thing I've got from it. Ability to do things that I couldn't before, like I mentioned before, throwing a ball and catching the ball. And it, it's, I feel like I'm doing proper exercise. They're big, strong movements. You feel like you're exercising, like you're gaining something. When I signed up to PD Warrior, it was one evening. I didn't know anybody else that had done the 10 week challenge. And I was thinking, am I doing the right thing? Is this a lot of money? And then I, I thought about what I liked about it so far. And I took that chance and I'm absolutely so pleased that I did. I think it was the best thing I ever did since being diagnosed with Parkinson's. Um, well, wow. To do it. That's fantastic. Thank you for that endorsement. I mean, I'm, I'm thrilled with what you're achieving and what you're doing on a daily basis. That, so that really speaks volumes. So am I. Yeah. Oh. And then, like I said, I saw changes with the app and then the 10 week challenge takes it to another level and it gets that commitment from you to do the exercises and the 80%. That's blooming hard. But you see yes, it is. <laughs> It is. And, and did you find that with the online version, you got, you got enough out of it? Obviously, it was a progression from the app. But could you understand, do you think, what the 80% was? It was sufficiently done through an online platform to give you that information? Yeah, I, I think in a perfect world, yes, there would be PD warrior classes where I am. There isn't. But I did find the 10-week challenge, yes, it gave me sufficient. There was support online. So if you're not sure, you could send a video in and get feedback on it. Um, yes. Yeah, so did you? Are you particularly IT savvy? Do you think? Do you think people would struggle if, if they're not familiar with Facebook and online platforms? I think you need to be a user of Facebook, but I'm not particularly IT savvy. That's my husband's department. He's our technical lead in the house. Is he? Yeah. But it was it was enough for you to be able to manage it with his support. Yeah, I think as long as you can write a face on a post on Facebook, that's all you need to do, really. Yeah. Okay. Well, that that's fantastic. Vicky, is there anything else that you would um, suggest people do uh, apart from the PD Warrior program, but anything else that you've found has been really good in managing your Parkinson's, helping you? Just to fight it every single day. Um, I view Parkinson's as a bully because I say it beats me, it scares me, it tries to control me, but I stand up to it. And you need that attitude to fight it every single day. And like I say, today is not the day that you give up. No, you've picked up your sword and you've picked up your shield. Your shield and you're, you're marching on. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's fantastic. Vicky, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. I look forward to seeing your crazy video. And I look forward to chatting with you maybe in May or June of next year after you've done Snowden. Can I just say thank you to you, Mel, to all the work you put in for PD Warrior? because it does make an absolute difference to so many people. So I, thank you. Oh, it's been an absolute pleasure. And Vicky, it's, it's honestly the biggest reward is chatting to people like you every day who we've only met online and, and not even face to face before this. And, you know, to hear what you've achieved and how your life is better. That's really what this is all about. And I've learned so much from you and from, from everybody else that's done PD Warrior. I feel so privileged to be part of this community. So thank you to you as well. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. It's been an absolute honour to chat with you. Thank you so much. And I am sure we'll be in touch back online soon. Excellent. Cheers, Mel. Bye. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, Vicky. Bye.